everybody. Happy Sunday. So hopefully everybody's been having, it's a beautiful day today. It was warm and, and, but it was windy. So hopefully everybody's haven't been having a good day. We had some storms here. So, um, actually the, there was a tornado just down, just to the, slightly to the east of me about mm, a mile and a half. Making sure my, making sure my cat, my tablet turned on. So, so hopefully everybody didn't blow away. It was just a really, really wild Friday. And now it sounds like maybe we're going to have some storms on, um, maybe on Tuesday. I think it's a Tuesday. So I'm going to be watching the news tonight. So the, uh, but we didn't blow away. I, I mean, it was pretty close to me though. A lot closer than I'd like it to be. <laughs> so, um, so how is everybody today? So it's sa it's Sunday. I've been kind of relaxing and not doing a whole lot today. I spent the whole evening cleaning my dad's bathrooms and kitchen last evening <laughs> in Anamosa. And so the house is on the market. I got it ready to sell and it's all empty and, um, it's all empty and, and, and I've got most of the cleaning done. I could stand to do a little bit more cleaning in the kitchen, but we'll think, we'll, we'll see what happens. I may stay home tomorrow. So be nice. Yeah, it was, it was a little weird. Cause when I drove home from work, I drove down, to, uh, I drive on the interstate and I could see a little bit of debris around, but it wasn't like bad. And then I drove down to where I turned to get on the highway to go out to my house. And, and there was all these lights and these, these like, um, like, uh, oh, like fire trucks and in, in police cars. And, <laughs> and it was like, oh, and then I looked off to the east and I'm like, I bet something really happened down there. And it did. It was the tornado kind of went through like just uh, east of sick or of, of um, Coral Ridge Mall, so out on the strip. So I don't live very far from there. It's less than two miles. <laughs> so, so anyway, I'm I didn't blow away. All I cared about was my cat and my sewing machines. <laughs> I was hoping that my my house and my cat and my sewing machines were still here when I got home. So that they they were. So that was good. So I hope everybody else is doing okay and is safe. So I know some of those storms moved on to the east. So some of you are from the east. So hopefully there you're everybody's okay and is um is uh having a nice day cuz like it is a nice day. It's just very windy here today. I went out just for a few minutes and it was very windy. So so is everybody ready to do a little bit of piecing? We're going to work on the May Kimberbell Cutie. You know, these have been so much fun. I'm really enjoying them. And I'm getting ready to work on, let's see, I have, I've already got June and July done. And so now I'm going to start working on um, August and September. And, uh, oh, good. I'm glad everybody's here. Oh, good. Yeah, everybody, it's, it's just, you know, this is the time of year that we can get these kind of storms and the weather has been so up, down, up, down. It doesn't surprise me that we're getting some bad weather. So um, I'm hope that Tuesday is not any worse than it was. I mean, we had enough, Coralville has enough cleanup to do <laughs> to, I haven't been down that way because I want to stay out of the way of everyone. So I'm trying to stay away from that area. Um, there's another small town north of us that I drive through to go to my father's that I went through and it was, it was, it actually looked pretty normal. They must've gotten a lot of the cleanup done on Saturday. So anyway, they, it, it, Solon was doing okay. And, but there was a lot of small damage in the sm small towns around this area. So, all right. So we're going to talk about, we're going to, we're going to start piecing this. I love, this was one of my favorite ones so far. I, this was, this wasn't hard. It does have um, some pinwheels. So, you know, we're going to, we're going to make some pinwheels and we've already done, I think we already did a pinwheel, didn't we? I think we already did a pinwheel on one of these. I've got the rest of them at the store, so I can't remember. So this is called, um, it's the May, the May one, but it's something about freshly picked flowers, I think is what they actually call it. 
So we're going to do some applique in the corners. And then I don't know if you can see real well, but they're, they're ribbon flowers. Aren't those cute? Oh, good. Somebody said their son lives in Hills. Oh, Marianne. Awesome. So he was okay. Yeah, they had some damage down there. So so anyway, these are these are ribbon flowers. So we're going to make some ribbon flowers. They're really, they look hard, but they're really easy. And then some of it's applique. So anyway, this was this is the May Kimberbell Cutie. So we're going to do a little piecing tonight. I'll lay this back up here so I can remember what I did. And, um, and also, don't forget, we're going to have a drawing at the end of the class. And this week, I, I thought, well, we needed to have something Eastery looking, you know. So I have, we made these cute little um, fat quarter bags, the little fat quarter bags. I think around a year ago, about I was up at Dad's when we did these. So it was about a year ago or so. And this one looks really Eastery to me. And then I thought, with that, I put in when one of the um, Sew Along with Jan needle cases. So this is a needle case. Okay. And then the little bag. So this will be the prize tonight. So remember that to, in, to enter the drawing, you need to comment. Okay. So anyway, these are really, these are cute little, little projects. So these will be the giveaway for tonight. So, all right. So I'll lay those over here. Just a minute here. Don't want to touch them to the iron. I got my iron going in case I need it. Oh, you never got the little bag made? They are fun to do, but they are very easy to do. And I just love them for, they make nice gifts. You know, they nice, make, nice, make nice gift bags because then you could do them, you know, for the holiday or whatever you're doing. So, okay. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the piecing. It's going to take a little while. You know, we have to do some blocks. I did pre-sew a few of the... Um, a few of the pinwheels so you didn't have to sit here for an hour and watch me make pinwheels. So, <laughs> so hopefully that's okay. I will make one in the class. I think you'll understand. And you only have to make four of them. And, uh, but first we're going to talk about the, what you got to cut and all that kind of stuff. So, all right. So give me a chance here to, I'm going to turn off the banner and change the camera here. Just a minute. Let me change the camera. Oops, sorry, my, it is quite warm in my sewing room today, and I had to close all the windows and the doors because my neighbors like to play very, very loud music, <laughs> and I was afraid you'd be able to hear it, so I had to turn off, I had to close everything down so that you wouldn't be able to hear the music. It's really loud next door, so hopefully tonight they won't play it at 1230 like they were the other night, so... All right, so we are going to talk first about the fabrics that you need for, it's called freshly picked flowers for the for the May tabletop. So I use, like, again, I try, I've been trying to use up my, like, stash. So I've been using mostly stash for this. And you need, um, my first fabric was yellow. So you need four, uh, I'm sorry five four by four blocks and four two and a half by two and a half inch blocks those these are going to be the cornerstones okay so i had this kind of cute little yellow with the little plaid on it and then you need four five of the four by four blocks so these are going to be on the inside with your um with your uh pinwheels so that, that i needed the yellow so i used yellow and then i used green and white for my pinwheels. So I have kind of a pale green. Now I've already used some of these and made the pinwheels up. So here's my white with the little polka dots, white on white. And then I had this real pale green that I made my pinwheels out of. So I've got, and you needed um, eight of each one of those. And I just have, you know, two left of each one because I made some of the pinwheels up. So here's some of my pinwheels over here. Okay, so here's some of my pinwheels that I already made up. I figured you didn't need to sit there and watch me make pinwheels for an hour. So, okay. So we got those. That's, that's for the inside little blocks. And then I use some gray for my um, little borders that go around the center. So I had this gray with this kind of little swirl on it. I thought that was kind of cool. And those are one and a half by 11 and 13 inch strips. Um, these blocks were three and a quarter, the green and the white were three and a quarter inch blocks and the yellow were two and a half by, you know, two and a half inch squares, 
for the um, cornerstones. And then the other ones were four inch squares. So the ones that go inside were four inch squares. And then I used um, the white tone on tone for my, um, for my corners, you know, for the, the triangles. And again, I took my a 14 inch square and cut and subdivided it. So you can see the picture here in, in, in four pieces. And then I also, before I cut it, I also put shape flex on the back because this is what we're going to be embroidering through. So make sure you put your shape flex on your 14 inch square that you're cutting in, you're subdividing into the four triangles. Okay, so I've got that done here with my shape flex. And then I cut um, the black for the borders. So I think I might have switched, I might have missed that somewhere. Four two and a half by 18 inch. Oh, this is what it is. This is four and a half by 18. So these are or two and a half by 18. So these are the, the four um, outside borders. Okay, and then we're going to put the little yellow corners on like this. All right. So that is my pieces. So you don't really need a lot for any of these. Actually, you really don't need a lot of fabric. So it is kind of nice. And I've just been using up like some fat quarters I had and I've been using, you know, stuff in my my scrap basket and stuff like that. So you really don't need a ton of a ton of fabric for any of these. Now I did do, um, let's see, I did some pieces for my embroidery and we'll talk about this on the embroidery. Um, these are for my flowers. So I had some flower fabrics here, just bright colors. And I think I cut, mm, they look like they must be about four inch. Yeah, four inch squares. They're four inch squares. So these are my fabrics for my embroidery, for my um, flowers. And then I did my backing. I had enough of this gray that I could do the backing in the gray and also my binding. Okay, so my my uh, binding and my backing are my gray also. The only thing I've really bought for the most part for any of these was I might have needed to buy a little backing because I didn't have quite enough to, you know, finish the whole thing. So, all right, so that's kind of, and then you'll need some ribbon for those ribbon uh, flowers. And so I had some, I think it's about quarter or three eighths inch ribbon. And then um, I use the quarter or three eighths inch ribbon for the stem. So I made the, this kind of a green so that the stem was uh, on the flowers. We had a, had basically leaves. So this is the leaves. And then I had some uh, four colors of red and pink for my flowers. Okay. So I've got those. All right. So we're going to make some pinwheels first. Let me lay these back and get them on my way. So we're going to make some pinwheels. And we've done, I think we did this in one of the first ones. We've done pinwheels and several other things. I can't remember if it was in a cutie or if it was in one of the, the quilts or whatever, but we've made some pinwheels. So we've done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our three and a quarter inch squares. There's eight blue, blue uh, white ones and eight green ones. Okay. And we're going to, I'm going to turn my page over. So it's actually on the first page on the bottom page 11 here. We're going to take our marking pen, you know, water soluble or whatever you like to use. And I'm going to mark my a line from corner to corner so that I have something to sew along here. Okay. And so I just marked it on the white so that it was easier to see. So I'll put my other ones over here. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sew a quarter of an inch on each, both sides of this line so that we're going to have our triangles on each side. Okay. So, let me get a second here. I am going to use my quarter inch piecing stitch. You can use a, a piecing foot if you like, but I like my piecing stitch. So I'm gonna use my Q01, or excuse me, Q02 stitch on my luminaire on the Q tab. It's, it's Q02. And in order to sew a quarter inch from this line, all I have to do is put the edge of my foot right along that line. So I'm just gonna put that foot right along my edge of my line so you can see that the needle is slightly moved to the right. And that's what the piecing stitch does. It puts the, the uh, needle in the quarter inch piecing position, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my needle. I think it looks like I need to take one, one stitch back. And what I like to do so that I kind of have a scant quarter, I kind of put 
the the foot like just so that the line's tucked under the edge okay so we're just going to stitch down the first side of this line second here i got something on there okay so we're going to do that now i like to chain piece these so what i usually do is i leave my as you can see i have this little button right here highlighted and that's my pivot feature so when it stops it's stop my machine stops with the foot up and my and my needle down okay so now i can just get this line back up with my foot for the next one and i can continue on and when i did the other ones this afternoon you know i just kept going because i had six six of them i did and so in, in in this case there'd be eight so you could do the same thing so i am going to take just a, a couple more stitches here okay and then i'm going to turn these around because then I can continue on because I need to go down the other side. So I just flipped them around. I just left a little tail here. So there was a little room. I'm going to put my my um, edge of my foot right on the edge of that line again. Got my needle down and I'm going to continue down the other side. So I'm just going to keep on going. Then I'm going to keep the, get these lined up again. Make sure I see the tip of that one. Make sure I get this one lined up. There we go. And then I'm just going to continue down the second one. So if you have eight of them, just go all, all the way down all eight and then turn around and come back and do all eight the other way. And I love the pivot feature for this because then um, your you can sh like you basically get your block right up to the edge of that um, of the needle so that you don't have to try. You don't have to worry about. Um, yes. This is a good way to make half square triangles. So, okay. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to clip these little clips in between here. And you can do this one of two ways. I have a tendency when I'm sitting here, you know, sewing and, and, and teaching classes that I just grab my, you can take it this over to your rotary cutter and you can cut from quarter to quarter. Now I have a tendency to grab my, my big scissors and just cut right down the line. That also works. So whichever works for you, I'm just going to do it with that because I don't have to get up and use my rotary cutter. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to cut down that line since I've got that. Okay. And there's four half square triangles. So does anybody have questions about that? Did that make sense to everybody what I did? I sewed my, I had my line sewed down each side quarter of an inch away from the line and then I cut them in half. Okay. So now these are not exactly the right size though. So they are gonna be, need to be trimmed. And, and um, when I looked at the instructions, so I'm gonna turn my page to the next page and it's on page 12. You need to square these up to two and a quarter inches. Well, I, I normally use my block lock rulers and I only have like two and a half, three and a half and so on. I don't have any, like quarter inch sizes but i did have another set of square off squaring rulers so if you give me a second i'm going to move my camera so you can see these squaring rulers and we'll square these up so you can see how i did this and these rulers are awesome and they have lots of different sizes so i like these really well because i have more options of size because I do do, like these were an odd size. I was, when I started working on these, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna need to have a different size here. Because I didn't, I looked at my block locks and I already had some of these, but I didn't have this size. I had to go buy a ruler. Because <laughs> my block locks were too, you know, were too big. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here so you can see. Let's get my ironing mat out of the way here. We'll need that in a minute. Okay, so these rulers, there's a whole bunch of different ones, and I love these, and I think I've shown these to you before in something, but these are called clear, clearly perfect slotted trimmers. I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I, I have a one that's still in a package. This was another one that was a different, this, these were the three quarter inch sizes, so clearly perfect slotted rulers or slotted trimmer, and these work great because you actually trim your blocks before you press them open and i find that i do much better with these and then nothing and i love my block lock rulers i i still use those but i don't have to turn 
and do as much with these because I can just basically turn side to side a little bit and they're all trapped. Okay. And do you have some of these? I love these. So anyway, these, this one is the three quarter inch, three quarter inch sizes. This one is the half inch sizes. So they have them in different sizes, half inch sizes. These are the full sizes, like two inch, three inch, four inch, and so on. And then these are the quarter inch ones. Um, I bought these. You can get them on their website. The company's name is, let's see, have to look. The company's name is Leaf, New Leaf Stitches. Okay, New Leaf Stitches. And they have a website. Um, I picked these up by Carrie Carr. Carrie Carr is the gal that invented these, and it's New Leaf Stitches. And I bought mine at a quilt store. So, you know, go to your local quilt store. They may very well have these. I got these at West Branch at the store out there because I like to buy local if I can. So I, I they, they had them and I went out and bought them out there. So if you if check your local quilt stores because they very likely could have them. But you can get them directly from her website. Okay? So I need two and a quarter. So this is my quarter inch ones. So I'm going to use this ruler and I'll show you how this works. It's pretty slick. And I like these because I don't have to move as much. Let me turn this so I won't burn myself on my iron here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is you're going to take this, this dotted line and lay it on the stitching. And then this line, so this is the two and a quarter. I don't know if you can see it very well. You could lay something behind it. This is the two and a quarter, okay? And I'm going to put the stitching on this line, and I'm going to put the um, the, the straight of the, the, the bottom on this line, okay? So this is the cut line, and this is the stitch line. And it looks like a stitch and a cut, so it's easy to see. And it was easier for me to see on the green side, so I'm going to put it on that. So I'm going to lay the stitch stitches right on the stitches and the cut line right on this cut line okay and then i'm going to slightly turn and i'm just going to trim along the tip up and down okay now the other thing that's cool about these rulers is you can do the little dog ears so you just go clip clip right there and look when i turn this open see the dog ears are already done too isn't that awesome? And they're very easy to use. So I'm going to do this one. So again, my stitching line's right here. So I'm going to put the stitching line on the ruler on the stitching line. And I'm going to put the cut line on the cut line right here. And then I'm just going to turn a little bit. And I'm going to go up the side, down the other side. And then I'm going to clip the little dog ears. One here and one here. So look at that. So see how easy that is? And it's so fast to do them. And I love my block locks. And I use, I still use those, but I picked these up a while ago and I hadn't used them. And I um, knew they had some of the odd sizes of squares. And I'm like, oh, these are awesome. So anyway, so I've been trying, I've been using these a lot. So we're going to trim them that third one. Like that. There's your little dog ears. Yeah, so new leaf, what did I say? New leaf stitches is the name of the company. But check your local quilt stores because my, my the closest one to me in West Branch had them. So I think they're pretty popular. All right, so we're going to line that up again. I'm lining the stitch line up with the stitch line and the straight line with the, with the cut line and then up the side. And down the other. And then these go from two and a quarter. Let's see. Whoops, I got to get my little dog ears done. Um, these go from two and a quarter to, I'll show you the, you know, there's different sizes on the same one. So you don't have to buy different rulers. You know, they're all on the same one. So this one goes from two and a quarter to seven and a quarter. Okay. And then like the other ones go from one and three quarters. This one goes from one and three quarters to seven and three quarters. And then this one goes from, two to six 
And this one goes from one and a half to six and a half. So they're all on. And then I think they have some bigger ones too. I just have the, you know, the smaller ones because I'm no normally doing, you know, relatively small half square triangles, but I think they have some bigger ones too. So aren't those cool? So anyway, that's my little, my little tool of the night is my, is my uh, clearly perfect slotted trimmers. So I do kind of like that. Which one would I recommend? Well, <laughs> I probably would start with the half inch ones, you know, the ones that are one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, and so on. And then the, maybe the two, three, four, five, but I'm finding that I'm running across patterns that I need the quarter inch ones and the three quarter inch ones. So I, I bought the other two because I had these two, the, the one and a half and the, like the half inch size and the solid sizes. And then, and then I found this pattern was the first one I ran. Oh, I got, I need a quarter inch. So I went and got the other two because I knew there was two more. So that way I have all four of them and these are kind of the best, the base, these should pretty much cover everything you need to do unless you need the great big huge ones. So, all right. So now we need to um, get these out of the way here. Got my little cuttings here. Give me a second to throw them away. So then we're going to press these open and I've got my little pressing mat that fits on my, this is my Martelli my Martelli mat, but, but it also has a pressing mat, which is nice. I can just lay this on top. Now, technically you're supposed to take the, you're supposed to take the cutting mat off, but this little iron doesn't, it's not that hot. I'm not going to, and there's no steam. So I'm just going to press these open and I'm going to press them towards the darker color. Neither are very dark, but I'm going to use the, press them towards the green since that's the darkest color. So I like to kind of finger press them and then I just give them a little press. Okay, so these are these are pretty cool little rulers. I mean, it's something. It's a new tool. If you do a lot of, I do a lot of stuff that seems to have triangles in it. So half square triangles. So I have to trim a lot of them. And I've always used my block locks, and I love them. But these are really cool. And then I can do some of the odd sizes. I don't have like all, you know, with the block locks, there was a different ruler for each size and this one has like multiple sizes on it so i thought that was really cool okay, so i'm just going to press those down and again i'm pressing them towards the green since because that's the darker of the two colors to get it you know i usually press to the dark side as jenny says okay let me just press that down all right so there we go I'll turn this a little bit so i won't burn myself all right so there's our four half square triangles and they're two and a quarter inches square so isn't that cool that very cool little tool i love i love those rulers so i wanted to show those to you all right and i could put a link in the in, on youtube i'll put a link to their website but check your local quilt stores because i imagine a lot of them will have them they're pretty popular around here so all right so i'm going to switch back over here again forgive my camera moving here but I wanted you to see the cutting so you could see that. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to sew our, our um, the next step is to sew these together to make our pinwheels. So now whenever I make pinwheels, like I said, I'm a very deliberate piecer. I have to look at the picture to make sure that I get them oriented correctly. <laughs> so this one needs to be with the green, the darker color on the top left. Okay, this way, and then this one needs to go this way. I always have to look at them to make sure that I'm orienting them correctly. And then I'm going to put this one. So I just look at the picture like this, and this one's going to go like this. So that looks like a pinwheel, doesn't it? Okay. So if you do all four of these, like when I did these, I just, I just got them all oriented and stacked them up so that I could just grab and do all of them at the same time. So I did three of them at the same time. Okay. So you could do all four and I've got my other three done over here. So we're just going to do the one. I think you'll understand once you see one. And we have, like I said, we have done some other, um, we have done some other uh, pinwheels. You're not the only one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, Margaret, I am kind of a deliberate piecer. So I have to look at the pictures to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So, okay. So now we're going to 
to, uh, I'm going to sew the top two together first. So I want to make sure that I leave the orientation correct. So I'm going to flip this over just like this. Okay, this is the bottom. I'm going to lay this over here. And I, I want to make sure this is correct. So I'm very careful because <laughs> I, I inevitably try to turn things sideways. So this is the bottom. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to nest those little, you can see I can nest those little pieces together right here, these little corners, nest together. Okay, and I'm just going to put a pin in there so it won't move. And I'm going to stitch this one. Okay. I've still got my quarter inch piecing stitch. Now when I'm, when I do these triangles, especially, I like to kind of use a, a scant quarter inch. And so what I'm doing is I'm just with this stitch, and this is my J foot, I'm just sticking the edge of the fabric underneath the foot so that I just can't see it. Whoops, I got to plug back in here just a minute. I always have my, my cord wrapped around my camera arm. Otherwise, I my cord <laughs> is on the floor all the time. So I have to move it. So when I have to move the camera, I have to take it off. So all right, so we're going to go down to the end of this one. Okay. All right. Now this one is going to go this orientation. So I'm going to flip this one over like this. And again, your little corners here will nest together. So the greens will nest together. Okay, so you can feel them. And then this is, so I, I, I'm going to look at it to make sure I didn't mess it up. See, I, I do this all the time so that I mess it up. So this one goes, that's why I have to look at this. So this one goes like, whoopsie, I messed it up. It goes this way. Yeah, this way. I'm very careful with, with, with uh, <laughs> pinwheels. There we go. So this way. All right, so we're going to sew it. Nope. See, it needs to go this way. There we go. I'll flip it over. I have a hard time with pinwheels. So the actual little place where it's nesting is at the top of this one. It was at the bottom of the first top row and at the top of the second row. That makes sense. So I'm going to put my pin there so I know that's the top. <laughs> then I know which side I'm sewing on. There we go. All right. So we're going to do the same thing with this one. And I'm doing kind of a scant quarter inch since these are, these are triangles. Okay. And there's our two sides. So now what I do when I press these open, when I have an, you know, my odd side, my odd numbered rows, I press the seams to the left. And so that's going to be the top row is one. So I'm going to press this one to the left. Okay. So I'm going to leave the other one closed for a minute and I'm going to press this to the left, the seam, so that they'll nest in the middle. I don't know why I've always done that. I don't know if that's the right way, but it was a way that I could remember how to always do it the same way. Okay. So that way I have my, my odd rows are to the left and my even rows are going to be to the right. So this one, is going to be like this and i'm going to press this one the seam to the right so let me open this up and then i'll bring it over here and press it so that's the way i've always done it it was just a way that made sense in my head i don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it but it just works for me okay so then we're going to put these two halves together so that looks right I'm just looking at my picture to make sure I didn't mess it up. <laughs> okay, so then we're going to put these two halves together. I'm going to flip them right sides together. And then these two little seams should um, nest together if you press them in opposite directions. So you're going to have kind of a little bump in the middle here, you know, because you've got some seams coming together there. I don't know what it is about triangles. I love doing things with triangles. So I happened, most of the things I've made have had lots of triangles in them. Okay, so get everything lined up and then we're gonna stitch this one. Okay, and you notice I dropped my needle. I'm doing my scant quarter inch seam. Okay. There we go. 
And now I know this is probably not kosher to every quilter, but when I have these big bulky seams like this, I like to open these up when I'm, especially when I'm quilting in the embroidery machine. So I'm going to take this and I'm actually going to open this seam up in the middle just to, to get the bulk down a little bit for the embroidery machine when I go to quilt it. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, I've done that before. I mean, it's easy to put these together wrong. You can easily get the wrong side uh, <laughs> sewn together. So I have to, I'm very deliberate when I do pinwheels. Okay. It's, it must be a visual thing for me. I don't know. There's something about them that I always have to be very careful. So there is my, my block. I'm going to open this seam up just to take the bulk down for when we're getting ready to do the quilting with the embroidery machine. Okay. But like I said, it's always good to double check your work and look at the picture just in case. <laughs> Because I have sewn them together wrong and then I have to go rip, you know, we just have to, we, you know, as we sew, so shall we rip, as they say. Okay, so here is my pinwheel, okay, the one I just did, and then here are my other three. So you have to make four pinwheels. So here's my pinwheels, my four pinwheels, and I have them all opened like that, okay. And there's my four pinwheels. All right, so does that make sense to everybody what I did and how I trimmed them and then how I sewed them together? The instructions are very good. There's good pictures. And these should be about four inches. So if you measured your, if you trimmed them accurately, they should be four inches, okay? And here I was, oh, thinking that I put the top together wrong. I don't think so. I think they're all the same. I think I did it. <laughs> so I have to, like I said, I have to watch be very careful when I'm putting these together. Okay. So there are the pinwheels. So that's the, that's the block that you do in this, in this particular one. So now we're going to do the, um, we're going to get our bigger yellow blocks, which are the four inch blocks. And we're going to put together like a nine patch in the center. So we're going to start with a yellow block for the first row. And then we're going to um, put in a pinwheel block. So we're going to sew this one together to this one. Grab a pin here. So hopefully my, like that. And I must have done pretty well because everything seems to be the same size. So that's a good thing, right? So we're going to go ahead and stitch this one together. Oops, I think I did it wrong though. Wait a minute, guys. No, I did it. I did it right. Never mind. No, I did it right. Plain block first and then the then the pinwheel block. Okay. And then we're going to put another plain block on the other end. Grab another one of the plain blocks. And we're going to put this one on this side. Like this. So there's going to be two plain blocks and one pinwheel block in this row. Like this. So get them lined up. I must have done pretty well. Looks like everything's the right size. So the only thing I have problems with when I get to the last bit is that sometimes my um, I can't square up when I have those corners on to the to the size that they say. It's usually mine are usually just a smidgen bigger, and it's usually less than an eighth of an inch, but I don't know what, I mean, that's just the way I'm stitching, I guess. But everything fits, so that's the important part. I did have trouble with the July one. All right, so there's the first row. Okay, so we're going to set that aside for a minute. The second row is going to start with a pinwheel and then have a plain block to the center. So we're going to put this on top like that, and we're gonna stitch this one to the pinwheel. So we're just making a nine patch with our plain yellow blocks and our pinwheels. 
All right, so there's this one. Okay, there's that one. And then I'm going to put another pinwheel on the other side. Okay, like this. Might have to put a pin in this one because my I don't want my seams to flip over on me. I like to flip over when they're on top. Sometimes when they're underneath, they don't, but they do on top pretty, pretty easily. Get this one lined up. Okay. Still doing our quarter inch seam. And like I said, I'm, I'm a pretty novice, you know, piecer. I enjoy piecing though, because I don't get to do it very often. And, and these have been so much fun because I actually have been piecing regularly, you know, it's kind of fun. <laughs> And the next two I'm doing, the, the blocks are really easy. All right, so there's our second row with the two pinwheels and the, I think I got a little off on this one, but you'll have to forgive me. Okay, so there's our two pinwheels and our plain block. Okay, so that's the second row. And then the third row, we're going to go back to the plain block with one pinwheel. Okay. Like this. Sometimes I have trouble getting them even on the ends. I don't know why. So hopefully that, that block will look okay. I may have to rip, you know, sometimes I have to. All right, so I'm gonna get this one. I'm actually rather warm. So I wish I could have left all the doors open and the windows, but it was so loud next door, I couldn't stand it. I was afraid you'd be able to hear the pounding music as well. I can't hear it as much now, so I noticed that the, a truck arrived next door, so somebody else came home. So hopefully, that's probably they probably made them turn it off because it was very loud. All right, so then we'll do this one and this one. So we're going to put the plain one on the other side, like that. And that's going to be our nine patch. So we'll have to press in order to put these together. All right, there we go. Get this one lined up. There we go. All right, so again, with this one, <laughs> yeah, the joy of neighbors. Well, I haven't had a neighbor there, Denise, for a really long time because there's a house next to me. When you're looking at my house, it's to the left. That's the first time I've had a house there for like 15 years. So I am not accustomed to having someone that close to me and they are very loud. <laughs> so I'm struggling getting used to it. Okay, so we've got our first row, okay? Our second row is the one with the with the plane in the metal like this. Okay, so our first row, we're gonna, again, I'm gonna press, because I wanna press these in opposite ways, the seams. So I'm gonna press my first row to the left because it's an odd number. So I'll do that now. Yeah, the other about two weeks ago, we had a we had a gun firing episode across the street here, too. So it's been kind of wild out here. I haven't been you know, I haven't been here for almost a year and got home in November and I've had all kinds of weird things happen. OK, so that's the first row. So I've got those pressed to the left. OK, and then the even row number two is going to be to the right. So this one's I'm going to press it the, whoop, the other direction. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I wished I wished I had um, everyone that lives down here. I am the old person. So everybody else, I would guess, is younger than me that lives in my area, except for one lady. So I think everybody else is like 30 somethings. So it does make it a little louder around here. <laughs> Okay, so then the, this one's pressed to the right, and then this is our last row, our third row, so we're going to press these to the left again. Oh, I've lived here a long time, so I've had some very interesting neighbors over the years. So it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not afraid here, but I... Uh, I don't like, I, I really like the quiet. 
<laughs> so that's the only thing that's bothering me right now is I'm not accustomed to all the music. So, okay, so there's our three rows. So I'm going to put the third row in my lap here so I can get these first two going. And so the top row, and I'm going to flip these right sides together. And I'm going to nest my seams that I just pressed in opposite directions. So I'm not looking forward to all the windows and everything being open because I'm sure the other night it was about between 11 and about 1230 that the music was going and I was trying to sleep. So some some people have to work on Saturday. So I wasn't it was Friday night. Okay. All right, so we get those pinned. And I think it looks like it lines up pretty well. So let's see how we do here. So we're going to lay these flat and do our quarter inch seam again. A little closer. There we go. So I got our first row and our second row. Okay. Pull these out. I must have hit one of those pins just a little bit because my needle, I need to change my needle. So you'll have to forgive me. I'm going to have to change my needle. It's still sewing okay, but my needle must have taken a little hit. I can hear it. Can you hear how funny the needle sounds? Okay. All right. So let me get that. So that's our first row and our second row. So it looks like I did pretty well with my corners there. And then give me a second. I'm going to have to change my needle. Must have ticked the edge of one of those needle or pins. Did you hear it? Yeah. You can just hear it. I don't usually have too much trouble with these because they're so soft. But every now and then, if I just, just cut, catch it just right, I have to put a new needle in. So I'll grab a needle and we'll put a new needle in. So you just get to see how I change needles. I change needles a lot. And if, if, you're, if your machine sounds unusual or has kind of a you know, a clicking sound like that did, then change your needle. It's it's most likely just the needle. So I do, a, I change needles a lot. They're not that expensive. Just go ahead and give it a change. All right. And remember, after you change your needle, okay, just a second, I got my thread wrapped around. Needle down, needle up before you try to thread, okay? Otherwise, you might bend your needle threader. We don't want to break our needle threaders. Needle up, needle down. That's very important. Especially if you've broken a needle. I don't change needles a lot um, just because, I, I mean, like change different kinds of needles because I am very, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of person, you know. Um, so I don't like to change a lot of different needles out because they have so many difference in differences in eyes and sizes and stuff and even placements. So I, I have a tendency to sew with my embroidery needles and embroider with my embroidery needles. And then I use a couple of other kinds. So, all right. So this one goes here like this. Okay. So we're going to flip this one over and get these nested together. So this is our third row. Yep, you could hear it. It just, it just, it must have just nicked the edge and didn't bend the pin, but it just nicked the edge of the needle, evidently. It makes it sound really funny. And these are the only pins that I ever sew over. So just be aware, do not do this sew over a pin. Because if I take those pins out, my corners will be completely off i know they will so i these are the only kind these are those magic pins those extremely extremely they're called extra fine magic they're patchwork pins they're very 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 soft and um oh that sounds much better so i do sew over these very 
carefully. Okay. But I do not do this with any other pin. So just be aware of that. We're okay. And you notice I don't go over them very fast either. But if I take those out, I know my 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 little points are gonna scooch. I have a terrible time with that. So I use I try not to take them out unless I have to. And sometimes I do. There we go. Okay. Get this lined up again. I'm kind of off. There we go. All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So there is our center. Yay. Now we're going to put in the borders. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and um, I know this. you shouldn't do it this way, but I am going to open these up just because of the quilting and the embroidery machine because the more you have the the more you know layers of seams you have the harder it is to get over some of that so i usually open up these seams when they're real bulky like this okay so i'm just going to open these up before we go on and the um they they lay much flatter than for the embroidery machine The big long arms, you know, if you did it with on, on like a big long arm, you know, it wouldn't really matter as much, but I may have to take this over on my other other ironing mat. Just give me a minute. I have I have a bigger iron going over here. My mat's bigger. Okay, got one side done. Having trouble with this one, it's being contrary. I do like triangles. Down. That looks pretty good. All right. There is our center. What'd you, what did Jan say? I don't understand your question, Jan or Jackie. Does the does the CD have the quilting designs or just the cutting designs? I don't understand. You mean the CD for this? This the CD for this just has the embroidery designs. That I I'm using the clear blue tiles, so there's no quilting designs. So I don't I think I think that's what you're asking. So so there's our there's our center. So what do you think? Got our pinwheels in there. Got them pressed down, and now we're ready for borders, right? So the, I think the borders, the inner borders, are next. Yes. So we're gonna do the um, short ones first. So here's our short ones. Let me do the side here. Yeah, I think it's pretty. I like I kind of like those little I kind of like those little plaid pieces. I got that for some class I taught and I had some left over, so I thought, well, that'd be a good one to use for this. So I like yellow. I'm trying to figure out what to do the August one in because they kind of did it in like blue and it's got uh, beehives on it. And the beehives, of course, are yellow, but I think they kind of did the rest of it in blues. So I'm, I don't have a lot of blue fabric, so I may have to do mine in a different color, maybe black. Because the black would be pretty with the beehives, too. So I may do have to do some black or black and white. That might be kind of pretty. And so we're going to pin both of these on. So I'm going to do the two short, the two shorter sides first, so on the opposite sides. So we'll do this one. And then we'll put the other one, the longer ones on. Okay, and 
and this one. It's harder for me to sew than it is to embroider with the camera because I have to put my arm through the cam, you know, over the camera <laughs> to get my hands in here to sew. So I'm always bumping the camera and I do apologize. I know, isn't it pretty? I thought it was pretty. It, it's supposed to be springy. It's May flowers. So I am ready for spring. So speaking of spring, did everybody see the um, Life is Better in Full Bloom pillow series? I got all five videos uploaded to Facebook and to YouTube. So I hope that you enjoy that, that series. I had a lot of fun making them. And the pillow is so cute. It's so happy and springy. It's yellow and blue and pink. And it's just so pretty. I really enjoyed making that one a lot. All right, so we're gonna do our quarter inch seam all the way down on the border, okay? So yeah, so I just finished that up. I've got it, I put it up on Friday, I guess it was. So, so all five videos are up. I put all the colors up in the comments, put all the, you know, links to everything, to our affiliate links so you can get your design, your whatever you want, and the, the quilting designs. And they're on YouTube as well. So the playlist is called Life is Better in Full Bloom. So if you like, rather watch on YouTube. I like to watch YouTube um, a lot because over Facebook because I can put it up on my TV and so I can see it on a bigger screen. So I watch YouTube quite a bit. Sometimes I have to go on the computer to watch some stuff just because I need something that I can't reach on the TV, but I like to watch the videos on TV. <laughs> so it's, but I did, um, and I also put a post up with a good picture of it. Okay, so now we need to press these. I'm gonna press these outward towards the border, okay? And then we're gonna put the longer one on the top. So there is the first set of borders. So yeah, that was really fun. It took me a little longer than I thought to get it done. I wanted to have it done before, you know, the first day of spring, but I, you know, you have to kind of stop and do your taxes and all that kind of stuff, you know? So I stopped and did my taxes and I meant to have it done before, you know, the first day of spring, but it got done shortly after. And then I'm going to, I think I'm going to try to do one more of the bigger, older pillows. Um, I want to do the spring one, which is the one with the little rain boots on it. And I also want to, what's it called? Um, Welcome Spring, I think. It's one of the old bench pillows. And then I want to do the one with the little May flowers, the little flower pots. And one of the little flower pots is tipped over and the little flowers hanging upside down. So it's so cute. I've got the kits for those. So I thought I might try to get those videoed also. All right. So we're going to turn this one over. Put the other. So these are the 13 inch ones. These are one and a half by, I believe, 13. You look and see. I think they were one and a half by 13. Yeah. Make sure I got the measurements right. So I've got a couple more that I want to video for you. Because I'm just kind of going through kits. You know, I had some kits in my in my stash and I've just been kind of going through kits and I thought, well, I might as well just turn the video camera on so people can, if they have kits, they can see me make it. It has not. Maureen, you are correct. It is, to me, it doesn't feel like spring. I mean, it today it was warmer and we've had a few warm days, but then it like, to, I mean, yesterday it was cold yesterday and the wind was blowing and it was cold yesterday i had my winter coat on yesterday okay so now we're going to do these get these all lined up and we'll do our quarter inch seam again and then we'll be ready to put the corners on i do like these flat headed pins because i can easily pull them because they're kind of they're easy to grab a hold of so as i get up to them see i can just kind of pull them out 
And I think it's easier to pull those out than it is the round headed ones. I like them both. I've got, I've got the flathead pins in stock on the website right now, but I don't have these because they've been out of them for a little while. So I have some of both. All right. Get this one. Cut that one off. Get my pins out of the way here. Turn this one over. So we're making progress. It's starting to look like something now. So I might even stay home tomorrow. I don't get to stay home on Mondays very often. So I might actually stay home and make cards tomorrow. I also need to get fabric pulled for like the next two cuties. So I was trying to, so I can get them cut out this week. <laughs> so I was kind of looking at stuff today, but boy, I just don't have a lot of blues. I may have to go look, look at um, fabric to see if I can find a little bit of blue. I just don't have a lot of blue fabric for some reason. All right, so then there's that border. Okay. The pins over here, and then I'm going to go press these, and I'm going to press them towards the border, okay? So we go press these out, and then we're going to be putting our corners on. Okay, so there are our borders. You have the panels to all oh, for the spring banner. Oh, you mean the, oh, I see the one, the Janine Babish one, Marianne. That one's cute. I have that one done. It's hanging in my living room right now. Okay, so we're going to put our borders on. Now remember, are there corners? So remember these corner blocks have the shape flex on them because we'll need that when we go to do the um, quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I like to fold these in half. Oh, from last Sunday, that that spring one, yes. The little spring, the little spring felt one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that was fun to do. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a couple of these. Mark the center. I'm just folding them in half like this so I can see the center where the center is. Yeah, it takes a little while for that to dry because when you dip the felt, you have to kind of let it dry overnight. Okay, so there's those two. And then I'm going to fold this piece in half also. Yeah, I love the yellow fabric. I don't even remember where I got that. Um, I want to say maybe Joanne's. And then the gray with a little with a little print in it that came from Helios up in in um, Mount Vernon. I know that's where because that, they have a lot of really nice blending blenders. Okay, so we're going to mark this one. Let's put our first corner on. We're going to mark our, you know, match our centers up here for our corner. Okay. Put a couple pins in. And then we'll do the other side. So we're going to do the opposite sides again, just like we did with the borders. Yeah, I think I got it maybe at Joe. Joann's. I want to say Joann's is where I got that. It's been a while ago. I got it for a, a class that I taught at the store before we weren't having class, you know, before the pandemic. So I I was I was teaching in in-person classes. And so I know I made some kits out of that. I know, doesn't it though? I like the gray and the it's very soft, isn't it? It's very soft. Okay, so there's my whoops. See if I can, I think I can see where I folded. Get my folds lined up here. Yeah, I like gray. I like light, I like grays. And this was pretty, I I could do the, the August one. I think I could do it in black. And so I do have some blacks. So I might actually, instead of doing blues, I might do blacks with the um, beehives because I think the black would look pretty. Okay. So there's the first two. So let's get these sewn on. So we're going to sew these on these two sides and then we'll press again. 
Now this one I'm going to go ahead and tie off a little bit in the corner here since we're getting towards the outside. I kind of like I kind of like to tie off. So I'm going to go with my quarter inch seam here. But remember, don't forget the, the shape flex on these corners. The, just put it on your 14 inch square and cut it with the shape flex right on it because you, you really need that for your for your quilt for your uh, embroidery. That way nothing will get all puckery. Because all of mine have been very flat. I haven't had any problems at all with them looking puckery at all. Okay, so turn it over and do the other side. It's got a pin. Yeah, this one was a was a pretty easy one. Some of the some of the blocks were, you know, some of the um, centers were a little more complicated. And I think the let's see the June one is another one of the um, disappearing nine patches. Yeah, that one's a disappearing nine patch. And that one took me a little longer because it had um, the rinds on the watermelon, and you could do like rickrack. One of my students came in and, and she used Rick Rack and that was very cute. And I've done them, the watermelons and I used ruching. So in the instructions, they tell you for the June one to use um, like a raw edge ruching, which I did not care for. So I actually made ruching. So that's what I did for mine. So I'll show you how to do the ruching. It's really cute. Yes, SF 101. That is correct, Mitzi. Okay, so there's the first two. Now these I like to press towards the border just because they lay, they seem to lay a little flatter. So I'm going to press these towards the border. Okay, there's our first two corners. Now this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my scissors and you can use your rotary cutter if you want to. I'm just going to snip these little corners and get them out of my way. Okay, you can use your rotary cutter if you want to. I usually just use the scissors and just snip them. These little dog ears gives me a nice flat space to go there. I don't think I did very well on that one though. We have to try it again. There we go. Okay, so there's those. I use a lot of shape flex. In fact, I need to look. I think I need to order another bolt. I, I order it by the bolt because I go through so much of it. Okay, so now we're going to do these other ones. So let me fold these in half. I'll fold these in half so we can find the center of this side. Sometimes it's easier for me if I stick a pin there, then it's easier to see. These have been so fun. Is everybody enjoying the, the cuties? Now I wanted to ask everybody, is everybody interested in doing the other the new set next year? Starting in January, would you like to start the new set that, that's the new ones that have just come out? Because I actually, I have the designs that the second book doesn't come out um, for another month or so, but um, I, have, I have the first designs and I think I might change the way I do them. Where do I, you can get the, the bolts of Shape Flex Mitzi. I buy it wholesale, but you can buy it at Joann's by the bolts. They often have them on sale. It's part of the, in, in the like the uh, stabilizers and interfacings, so you can you can buy it on sale. And they have like 10 yard bolts. I buy it 25 yard bolts. Okay, so I I'm folded my triangle in half, and we're going to match up our centers here. But yeah, if you're interested in doing the, I've been thinking about the second set because people have been um, asking me about them, and I thought maybe we'd do those next year. And I kind of think I'm going to do them more like these. Um, they're all pieced, like all the center blocks are pieced in the hoop. And um, 
I don't like when you know the when there's no quilting through the back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a test sew pretty soon on one that I think I'm gonna do them the same way. We'll just make the blocks in the center on like no show mesh and then sew them together, sew the whole thing together and then quilt it. Cause I, I think I'll like it better that way. And then we'll do the embroidery through it again. I just don't care for the, the fact that there's no quilting through the back. And I think they'll not be as stiff um, if they don't have, you know, if the quilting is done afterwards after the the top is pieced so i think you can i think i think that's how i'm going to do them but i'm going to try it and see if it works i haven't i haven't had time to look at that yet but that's one of my to-do lists for the summer so and then we'll start working on those okay so now we're going to do these now i'm going to i'm going to tie off on my corners here drop my needle and remember Dropping your needle really helps because I have a lot of people ask me, well, my all my fabric goes down into my zigzag plate. Well, drop your needle into the front of the fabric before you start sewing. Don't just, you know, step down on the gas and make sure your needle's down and it has to be in the fabric, not in front of the fabric. And then you won't have that problem. And just take a one or two slow stitches and then continue on a little faster. That was one of my little grandma tips because grandma taught me to sew on a treadle sewing machine and you had to always start with your needle in the down position. If you didn't, it would unthread every single time. <laughs> so I learned that really quick. <laughs> and it works for regular sewing machines as well, for, for modern sewing machines as well. As her 1924 Franklin treadle machine. Okay, we're going to turn this around to this side. And I did tie off at the end. Okay. Whew, it's getting warm in here, guys. I'm going to be glad to open the doors again. My sewing room is on the southwest corner of my house, and it gets so warm in here. And I haven't, you know, I haven't gotten this air conditioner out. I'm going to have to. I usually have to get it out first, second week of, of April because I can't stand it at 80 degrees when I'm trying to work. Every time I come home at night, it's usually somewhere between 80 and 85 degrees in here. So, and you know, it's not that warm in the house. The rest of the house is just this room. So I run an air conditioner out here starting very early. All right, we're going to get this one done. Take that pin out and then we'll tie this one up at the end. I think I need to back up one stitch tie it off. There we go. All right. Yeah. And Carol, are you making the new ones, Carol? I, I'm not sure that I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to try the other way and see if I like it better. Um, so that's something that I'm going to work on this summer and then I'll let everybody know because you could do them with an edge to edge quilting design. Like we did these instead of doing them um, individually, individual pieces so so anyway i don't like i don't like that method uh, as well as having it quilted through the back so okay so here are all four corners okay now this one says so this is where i'm going to have to get up for a minute it says square up your new block to measure 18. so i do have to square this up a little bit so it'll take me a minute i got to stand at the at the table and i am going to press my seams in towards the border again okay the gray border but I'm going to have to stand over here for a minute to square this up.
Okay, that did say 18, right? I got to look at my book again. I'll be right back. I got to grab my rotary cutter here. So when you're doing this, what I'm doing is taking this on my mat and I am using the, the lines on my um, mat to help me. And you need to stay a quarter of an inch above your tips because we want a quarter inch seam there. Now mine always ends up a little bit bigger than 18. Because I don't want to tip I don't want to, I don't want to trim off my, you know, my corners of my borders. So I'm, so mine is going to be just a smidge bigger. Okay. And if you have a big ruler, it helps. I don't have a big ruler, so it does help if you have a really large ruler. This one's being kind of contrary, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm having a little trouble with this one. Okay. I think we're pretty good. And mine ended up being about 18 and a quarter inches square. So mine always ends up a little teeny bit bigger. Yeah, I think I'm going to, that's, I think that's where I'll do them, Maureen. I, I think they'll work because I think you can do the, you can do the, um, the centers, you can do the blocks that are in the center uh, just on no shell mesh for the new ones and then sew them together and then just put everything together and then quilt it. I think, I think it'll work as, as far, I was kind of looking through the directions, so I think it'll work. Okay. So mine ended up being, so what I was telling you is be careful. You want to make sure your quarter inch is from here to the tips because you don't want to, you don't want to cut off these little tips. So I, I was being very careful. So mine ended up being just a little bit bigger. Okay. So we're going to put on our borders now. So now we're going to put these borders are nice because they're all, um, they are solid. So you didn't have to piece these borders, you know, two pieces together. So we're going to go ahead and put our border on. So the two opposite sides. So hopefully I didn't get this one too close. I'll have to watch that to make sure I don't cut off my corner. I may flip it over and sew from the back so I can look at it. Okay, so what I like to do with my borders is I like to pin them on the ends first. Okay. And then I like to pin them in the center. So bring them to the center. I think that looks pretty good. Make sure they're laying flat. I'm going to have to be careful of that center because I got that one just a teeny bit close. So I want to make sure I don't cut it off. Hi, Cindy. People coming in late tonight. That's okay. You can watch the videos. All right, so we're going to flip it over, do the other side. I kind of liked this black with it too. I mean, do you, do you like the black? I, it was, 
I, I was going to use a different color and then I thought, hmm, I kind of like this black. It goes nice with the gray. So this might end up being in the, um, the same fabric. I think I've got some more of this. This one might end up in the August one too, because because the August one, I thought instead of blues, I thought it might be prettier in the black and gray because of the little beehives. So I might go rogue. I kind of go by the colors they have because people, you know, look at the pictures and the book and stuff. And so I kind of use similar color schemes, but. Oh, it is. It is very hard. I that I think that's the that's the thing that takes me the longest because it takes me hours to sit there and pick out colors. And, you know, then once I get it all cut out, I know what I'm doing. It's not, you know, putting it together isn't bad. But oh my gosh, trying to figure out and then what I'm trying to do is just use my stash. <laughs> so, and I don't have I have fabric but not tons of fabric. So, and by the way, I'm piecing with my um, my Pima cotton. I'm just using white. All right, so we're going to do our quarter inch seam here. So I'm going to be a little bit scant because remember that one spot, I wanted to make sure I don't clip my corner off. Okay, a second here, I'm going to get stuck. I didn't take my embroidery unit off tonight, so I'm kind of sewing gets catching on my embroidery unit. All right. So yeah, this this one actually might I think I've got another piece of this. I think this one might be a nice one from the August one. It's little beehives. And um then there's some buttons. Just so you know there's actually buttons that they made for the, the August one. And um, I, I'm going to order some and put them on the website because I just never had them. So I ordered some for me. But there's like little B buttons that they may actually made for this table topper. So if you want some B buttons, I'll put them up on the website. I'm going to order them this week. Thought they were cute. All right. So we're going to do kind of our scant quarter inch because I'm trying to make sure I don't, you know, clip my corners of my gray borders. Yeah, I thought the, the black looked really neat. And then when I quilted this, I actually quilted it in white thread and you could really see the, the quilting on the black, but it, I made it like, it's like swirls with flowers. And it was actually in the, it was in the, um, the clear blue tiles set. I think it's, it's the spring one. So I thought it was really pretty and it looked like the flowers, so. I'll use that one again, probably. All right, I'm gonna tie this off. Yeah, picking the flowers is hard, or picking the, the colors, I think it is. And like I said, I'm trying to use up my stash. Okay, so let's see how Jan did. Woohoo, I don't think I lost my corner there. So let's try this one. Woo, I think we did it. Okay, so I'm gonna go press these out. I know the, the Hobby Lobby stopped carrying Pima, Pima cotton. I'm upset. So I got a bunch for Christmas. So I have a bunch of it. Okay. And I am pressing these towards the border. Yeah, I was so upset when that when Hobby Lobby stopped carrying that, and I, I don't think they're ever going to carry it again. They're they're just they've discontinued it, which is really sad. Um, so I'll I've got a whole bunch of colors in the Pima, but um, I'm probably going to have to switch to Orofil. All right, so somewhere along the way, or my here's my borders. So we're or my corner blocks. We're going to put our corner blocks on the ends of these two. Okay. Did this in the yellow. We're going to sew these on the ends of our next last two borders here. Where else you can? Okay. So I used to buy it at Craftsy too, and Craftsy doesn't carry any product anymore because when they bought and bought and sold several times. So if you look it up online, there are some other places that have it, but I'm not sure 
you know, I haven't tried it, so I can't tell you how good it is. I think I'm going to have to go back to like some of my basic colors that I use all the time. I'm probably going to have to go back to Orofil. Orofil is a very good thread, but I just, it's so soft and it unthreads all the time because I use my cutter. It's very good thread. It runs to the machine very well, but it's just very frustrating for me because I have to rethread the machine every five minutes and it's expensive. But I, because that's why I've loved this Pima because it's not as curly. It's not as soft. It's got a little bit more body to it. So we're cutting, we're putting our little two and a half inch squares on the end of our, on the end of our um, borders here. And these, I'm going to press the seams in towards the border so that my little squares will line up nice on the corners. Okay. So that's what we're going to do there. Yeah, so I was really disappointed. I, I got a whole bunch for Christmas because a couple of my friends bought me a whole bunch when they were clearancing it out, but they didn't have much white or like cream, gray. Those are my colors I use all the time. And and so um, I don't have much of those colors left, but I do have a lot of other colors. So I can just, you know, fill in with Orofil. But this sure does not, this doesn't, un, this doesn't unthread as easy. <laughs> okay, so let me go press these. I'm going to press these just in toward the black border, okay? So these are going to, I'm going to press in towards the black border. like this black I might actually do my my um yeah it's not just you it's it's they just don't have it um th this is kind of pretty I kind of like this so I might actually end up using this with the beehives so I may go blacks instead of blues on that I think it'll be pretty because I do I do have more of this fabric I think I got that at Joann's maybe all right so now we're going to pin the, these on the other two sides and we're going to match up since we we press these in towards the border so then they're going to be opposite of the other corner so then we can nest those little seams in there beautifully on each side so get that done first yeah so i'm anxious to do try the other ones to see if they work the, the way i'm thinking they will I hope they will work that way and we'll put you know shape flex on the corners again just like we did with these and then we can we can quilt them like edge to edge and then we can um do the embroidery through and i'm going to do the two bench pillows that i'm working i'm going to work on and i want to do those the same way i'm going to do those i'm going to piece them all together and then I'm going to quilt them and then I'm going to embroider them. So they'll be done the same way. All right, so get this one laid down, the center here. Put an extra pin in here. I'm not sure I did very well with my centering. I think it's okay though. All right, turn it over and put the other side on. We're almost done. Oh my gosh, these are so cute. This one too, I really like this one. This is one of my favorite ones so far. I really like doing the June one with the little watermelons, but it does take a little while. That one's a little bit harder. It's not hard, it just has more pieces to it, so it takes a little bit longer. And um, the July one was just a little weird. So if you're working ahead, just be aware that July... July, um, I could not get the center line, um, 
squared up to the small, small size they said. So I had to increase the length of my border pieces. So I'm just gonna recommend everybody cut them about a quarter of an inch longer, um, right from the get go, because then you won't have any problems. I could not get mine to be as small as they said it was supposed to be. It, the center is smaller. That one is smaller than the other ones by, by about an inch or inch and a half anyway because the center of the way the center was done. So, um, but I had a hard time squaring it to what they told me to square it to. So I uh, had to increase the size of my borders a little bit. Okay. And then I had a little trouble with the corners as well because <laughs> the corners were weird. I don't know what, I don't know why they didn't quite fit the way I thought they were going to, but they didn't. Okay, so make sure we tie off these corners here so that we don't have our borders not tied on. Um, yeah, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to do them. I think I'll do the, the second set of the cuties the same way as I'm doing these. We'll, we'll embroider after we quilt. I'm going to, I'm going to piece the blocks in the hoop because all the blocks are pieced in the hoop. I'm going to piece them in the hoop but I'm not going to um, quilt them as I go. I'm going to do it after. Like I'm doing these and, and we'll quilt it and then we'll put the, the corners in. So, cause they're all in the corners from what I have seen. So I, I need to look at the instructions a little closer cause I just, you know, I've got them now, but um, so if people are interested in doing them, then we will do those. Um, next year. Because I thought they were cute. You know, it's nice to have seasonal things to lay out on your tables and stuff. And table toppers are always something you can use to lay out. All right. So I'm going to tie this off down here. Yeah, edge to edge. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to piece the blocks in the center. Um, but I'll just do them on, on no show mesh instead of, you know, like, um, with the batting, no batting and then, and then sew them together with the rest of the pieces with no batting. And then I'm going to, um, quilt it with an edge to edge pattern and then do the embroidery. So I think, I think it will work from what I've looked at so far, but I just have to. I have to go back and look. <laughs> haven't I haven't read through the instructions in depth for the second ones. These took me a little while to figure out how I would do them because I I wanted to do these um, you know traditionally, but I I can't free motion very well, so I wanted to make sure I could do these in the embroidery machine for quilting. And the clear blue tiles work very well, and many of you are quilting these in different ways, so well, however it's working for you. Clear blue, a lot of you are doing clear blue tiles. A lot of you are doing um, like using the design center or IQ designer in your machines. That's another way you could quilt these. So whatever's working for you. But I'm, I'm really liking the clear blue tiles now. They are very fun to use and they have such cute designs and they just do a beautiful job of um, edge to edge quilting. Okay. And you don't have to, you know, line up the start and stop points and all that. I think that's neat. Whoops. Must have hit a pin. See, that's why. See, can you hear? I think I hit the pin. Let me cut. See, I must have hit a pin. I didn't think I did. Uh, yeah, I did. I must have taken the head off of it. <laughs> you guys get to see me do it twice in the same day. I hardly ever hit these pins. So now this one's stuck in my machine. So just a second here. We'll just let, I'll take the lid, the lid off here and get it out. I must have taken the head right off of it. Isn't that funny? Oops, I can't get a hold of it though. It's right here. There we go. Got it. All done. Only in live cameras, right? You have to, you have to, you have to do that when you're live. 
Oh, did you see the pinhead fly? I didn't. I didn't even see it go. These are so so soft. I just never have any problems. We'll see if my needle sounds okay yet. Sometimes it doesn't even do anything to the needle. I mean, the needles are a lot harder than these. These pins are so soft. Let's see if the, need, the machine sounds okay. Yeah, just a little bit. I've got a little bit of a click. I'll have to change it again. All right, so let's tie this one off. It's not that bad. Okay. Yeah, I must have just, I must have hit it like right above the pin of the head and it, uh, and it flew. I don't, I don't even know where it went. Okay. Well, like I said, don't try to do this with any other pins because you'd be taking your, your machine to the, the repair technician. I only use these. These, these just never, I never have, it, rarely have any problems, but you guys got to see me do this twice tonight. So it is just part of the deal, right? Okay, so I'm going to go press this and you'll get to see the final product. Yay, this is going to be so pretty. And I'm going to, and then, okay, so just so you know, next week is Easter. This is Palm Sunday, so next week is Easter, so we will not have class next Sunday night, okay? So you're going to have an extra week to get your, your top done and your quilting done. And I'm going to press these towards the border. Okay. Woo, that looks pretty good. I kind of touched this tip a little bit. I might have to unsew and do, actually it doesn't look that bad though. My little tip here, it wasn't wasn't uh, completely perfect. It went back to the back side. Oh, okay. I'll look and see where it went. I haven't seen it yet. Did it go this way? I think the head went this way. Every now and then I get close to the heads with the foot and the the heads just pop off the end so that might have actually been what happened it might not have hit the pin i might have just the, the head just popped off because <laughs> i've done that before and i've actually sewn through the heads of the round ones i've never tried i've never sewn through one of the other ones yet the flat ones but i i could see how you could easily sew through that okay so what do you think so here is our may to the right. Okay, I'll see if I can find it. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, there I see it. It is. It just popped the head right off. I must have hit the head with the edge of the foot. Just popped the head right off. Look at there. There it is. I found it. It was to the right. Thank you. So yeah, so it must have just popped. Sometimes I hit those and I hit it with the edge of my foot and it just pops the heads right off. And I think that's actually what happened. <laughs> okay. So what do you think? There's our, 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 uh, May cutie top. I really like that. What do you think? You like that? You like that? I'm, I love that that black. You know, I kind of like this fabric and I've, I've got some more of it. That may be the one I use for August because I, I was struggling today to try to find something for August. And uh, I was looking and it's it did they did it in blues and I thought maybe it'd be better to do it in black. So I think I might do it in black. So I like it. Okay. So sorry about the pins, guys. You know, sometimes it happens. That's why I, I tell you while I'm sewing. I, I do leave them in, but I only use a special pin. So as you can see, it does happen to me occasionally, but not very often. That's probably the most that's happened to me in the last year. <laughs> and it, of course, it had to be on camera. So, you know, now you have proof, right? <laughs> okay. Yes, yes. And and like I said, I I really don't have trouble, but do not try to use any other pin and go over them. Do not. I never use any other pins and I I don't have problems. Um I have like I said, I've even sewn through the heads. I like flat headed ones. I do. I do like those. But I must have gotten too close to it with the edge of my foot and then it just phew, went flying. Okay, so let me turn my camera back up and we're going to have a drawing. I got to find my gift again. Oh, here it is. 
Here it is. So you've got, remember, you've got two weeks um, to get your, your top quilted. So when we'll do the embroidery um, uh, a week from, or two weeks from today, whatever day that is. What's the day? Let's see. The 16th. April 16th, we'll, we'll finish up our cutie. All right, so let me turn my camera back up here and we'll have a drawing. So everybody can laugh at me with the pins. Okay. Can everybody hear me okay now? Hopefully. Yeah, I, yeah I'm going to go to, to a friend's for Easter, so... It'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna have a drawing for the little for the little drawstring bag, okay? And then one of the sew along with Jan um, needle cases. So this is a needle case. They're made out of felt, okay? And this this design is up on the group in the Dropbox for free. So if you want to make some more little needle cases, these are fun to make. Um, these are up on the the Dropbox for free because I did this for everybody. And then this is a little bag, okay? Yeah, everybody got a chance to laugh at me, though, didn't you? Okay, let's see. Where? Oh, here, I got to get my tablet a second here. Let me get my tablet so I can get my... Now, if those of you who are watching from away, if you're not close to the Iowa City or Davenport stores, please, please, um, you'll have to personal message me through Facebook with your mailing address for the gift, okay? So I've been mailing them the last few weeks. I've been mailing them. So, okay, so I'm going to see if I can find a name. And I'm just going back and forth. Let's see here. Whoops, second here. Looks like, uh, oh, it, it's uh, Margaret Default. Margaret Default. Cool. So, Margaret, you won the prize. Margaret is from Davenport. So, hopefully, she can either pick it up or have somebody pick it up for her. So, I'll send this down to you, Margaret. This is for you in a, in a needle case, okay? Woohoo! I know Margaret's been here. She'll she'll come on and say something. So Margaret Default. All right. So I'll put this on. I'll put send this down to Davenport for Margaret. And next week we'll have a week off for for Easter. What is ruching? Oh, ruching. Uh, ruch. I'll, I'll go get it. I'll show you what ruching is. On the July, this is the June one. So we'll do this one next. This one, this is ruching. So what it is, is you take like, um, you make like a bias tape. And then you just take a, um, I just go on the sewing machine and you kind of make a like, kind of like a, a loose serpentine down the bias tape. And then you just gather it. And it makes that cute little gathered look. Isn't that cute? And you could use like, you could also use like um, Rick Rack. That'd be really cute too. I've done some with Rick Rack, but I, I like the ruching. So I did the ruching. So that's what ruching is. Okay. You see if anybody else has got any other questions. Okay. So, so next week we'll have, we'll have, um, we'll have a week off and then the 16th we'll come back and we'll finish our quilting and, or I'm sorry, the uh, embroidery on the May cutie. So we're going to make these cute little uh, flowers. Now this one is a little bit bigger than some of them. So you do have to have, this one was done in an eight by eight hoop, I believe. I think I did these in an eight by eight hoop uh, or a nine by nine hoop because they were a little wider because of this big flower here. So, so if you have a smaller hoop, it might be a little harder. You can get them in a six by 10 if you take out the, this, line if you print it off you can still get it lined up okay so i'll show you that because if you take this out i think it will go fit in a six by ten hoop but i i'll, I'll just use an eight by eight or a nine by nine so okay all right so thank you everybody congratulations margaret on your win and i will be seeing you in two weeks so happy easter to everybody and we'll see you in a couple weeks to finish up the make kimberbell cutie Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.